What is going on DIY fans? In this video, the video I'm going to dub DIY experiment. I don't know why it's not really an experiment, but this video is for those of you who like to do stuff yourself. And this particular video is for motorhome owners with an F53 chassis. It'll really work for anybody who has cars, trucks, SUVs. This particular one is going to be on motorhomes and in particular replacing the shocks on your motorhome. So let's get into it. This is one of the easier DIY things that you can do. I say that now, but I haven't really done it before, so I, I don't know. I'm assuming that it's really easy to do. I've done it before on cars. I've done it before on trucks. I've done it before on motorcycles. Shock absorbers, two bolts, one on the bottom, one on the top, that's it. One of the important things that you wanna make sure that you don't do is cut this band. Do not let these things expand until you find out where you need these bolts to line up. I think mine are gonna line up perfectly as it is so I can bolt this in and then cut the band and then this thing will be ready to go. If you cut this band too early, now you're gonna have to worry about compressing these things again to get them to line up with the holes so we're not going to do that. And then we'll talk about what to do if in fact that you have to uh, compress these things, little tricks and things that uh, I think you could use to get these done. So let's pop outside, get the old ones off, get these things installed. I'm rating this on a scale of one to 10 on expertise at about a six or seven. It's really not that hard. There is some equipment that you're going to need. You're gonna need a big set of wrenches if you are wrenching on your own motorhome, you need a big set of wrenches. Go down to Harbor Freight's a place to get cheap tools. Their new Pittsburgh line is actually pretty good. Go get a big set of tools, get a big ratchet, get some big sockets, and it'll make your life really easy when working on your RV. So let's do it. Shown this to you guys before, I think. This is a, a big old socket set I have. Giant, giant ratchets. It's three quarter inch drive. So stuff like this makes it very, very easy. Big ass sockets. That one there, an inch and a five eighths. But you got a tool set like this, it works great. Uh, torque wrench, this won't work for this set, but that won't work for this set. I use that for tires, but the rest of this stuff we'll be able to use to get these shocks off. The old shock there, you can see it behind the, the dirty ass wiring. That's the top shock, and that is the bottom bolt of the shock. We're just going to undo those quick, and that bad boy should pop right out. This one is the, gonna be the problem because of the fact that this one is gonna be compressed right now. So we're gonna put a jack underneath the bottom to hold on to that so that uh, it doesn't pinch my hand tear off a finger or do anything like that. Okay, don't freak out. It's not likely to tear off your finger. Might pinch it a little bit, but not gonna tear it off. An essential tool that every RVer should have, especially a DIY RVer, is a bottle jack. This one here is a 12 ton, 24,000 pound jack, so can essentially lift up the entire RV. It's more than enough to do one corner, and that is what we're gonna use to help hold this shock up while we get it unbolted. Slide this bottle jack underneath the steering arm there and put it up under the shock. I'm not going to get it completely in place yet until I get those unbolted because it's just holding it there for no reason. I'm assuming that these uh, shocks are gonna need some compression, so that's why we're just gonna do this as a, as a precaution. Just put that up against it and then give it just a couple of, couple of cranks there. Just enough to hold it in place. And actually, I'm going to let that jack down a bunch because I'm gonna need some room to be able to lower that. So wasn't really thinking when I put that up tight. We don't wanna do that. So what I mean by that is we're going to lower that and we're gonna jack it all the way up to see if it'll go touch that in place. That way I've got that much room to lower it down if I, if I have to. So we've got all that play and we might need all of that, maybe more. So we'll see. And again, just up enough to hold it. So as you can see there, there is no way I'm gonna get that socket on that side there. 
which kind of sucks. Again, engineers don't think about working on these things. So I'm going to get the socket on this side. I'm going to turn the socket on this side and just hold that on that side with uh, my big crescent wrench and that'll work just the same. So while that's holding that, let me just give it up. No, not going to be able to move it with that crescent. So let's give it a, a shot here with the, uh, with the big wrench. Slowly but surely. I actually should throw some, uh, stand by, I'm gonna throw some WD-40 on that and then I'll uh, go after it again because it's gonna take a little bit. We should be there. Oh yeah. Not a problem. We'll see how easy that slides out. Be very careful. This is where you can get your fingers pinched if that jack was to, to let go. So just very cautious here. And right now we need to jack it up a little bit to see if we need more pressure or less pressure on there and see what's gonna get that bolt out. Maybe not. So we'll go the other way, just nice and slow. Put the thing down and see if that'll that'll pop out and slowly let it down now we have almost no pressure on it okay that right there looks like i've got a little bit of play in there so that looks like i'm in the right spot let's just uh give it a tug and see what happens let's drop it down a little bit more i think we're right where we need to be so we're gonna get a screwdriver up in there and pry that pry that out should always have a screwdriver of some sort as a pry bar or even a pry bar to uh, do something like this. As you can see, that makes it a little bit easier. Having a bit of a hard time getting that out. So again, this whole time, folks, very, very careful. It doesn't look like there's any any weight on that at all so it looks like it's okay but just be careful because any second this thing could let go and pinch a finger and ruin your day so um don't do that set of channel locks it's really awkward in here i'm not in a good spot to be able to Pull that out. So I'm going to hold pressure on the shock so it stays on the jack as we work this out. But like I said, this whole thing could let go once I get it out far enough and hurt, but it's not going to do that. We've got that there. Now we're going to keep it on top of the jack and let it down and see. How everything works out and see it does look like it's extending a little bit so let's hope that we get it down low enough that we can get the jack out and I think we're that's we're at the end of the jack so we're gonna find out right now if we can get the jack out from underneath there and all I'm gonna do is just knock the jack out if I have to because it's uh, the shot can't, you know, can't go down that far. So um, we can just pull this thing out, and you can see it only come down another little bit from there. Hopefully that was on camera because uh, I can't see anything right now. All right, now we're gonna unbolt the top one and pull this thing out. I'm not going to show unbolting that top bolt. It's just taking the bolt out like I did down here. Uh, no pressure on that top one now though. Man. These freaking flies are crazy, killing me here. So, there we go. The old shock is, is out. I'm gonna immediately take this thing and go back up in there, toss it in, and then we'll see where the bottom holes line up. All right, I might upgrade this from a six difficulty to an eight, just because of the uh, top, not getting to that thing 
and the little contortionist move that you've got to pull to to get that bad boy out hopefully you guys will still be able to see this with my armpits in the way get that lined up get that back on there let me bring you guys in here and have a look at this look if you see with the with the strap still on, we're gonna be super close to that lining up. Now, instead of drop, dropping this down, I'll put the bottle jack under here and bring that, that spring up so that we've got the ability to get that other bolt on there. So, gonna be pretty easy. So, I'm gonna do that top one first and then I'll come down and show you guys doing the bottom. All right, top bolt is in. It's not fully tightened because I wanted to give myself a little bit of space for moving this around. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty tight. So I'm gonna make sure this bottom, the bottle jack is down right here. I hope you all see it just down there in the bottom of the camera. I'm gonna jack up that spring just a little bit and see if we can't align those holes to make this a really easy install here. And we gotta be pretty close. Let's see. Drop the bolt in. And gotta come up a little bit more. And that's it, folks. She's in. And it's gonna take a little bit of a little bit of finagling to get it all the way through, I think, but actually it's going in pretty easily. We'll uh, take a pry bar here. Uh, coax it in and that's it now I got to tighten that nut up and we're good to go that's the one shock and that's that's what I'm gonna cut it because I don't think it's necessary to show you all four shocks one shock they're all the exact same as far as how it's done unbolt the bottom first use a jack or something up underneath to hold this and then and then you can take the top off this one took approximately it's about 45 minutes right now from when i started these take a lot there are a lot of turns to get them in so i'm assuming it's going to take me about 10 to 15 minutes to tighten both the top and the bottom bolt and we'll be done so that's one hour is what that took uh once i get it completely bolted in i will just uh cut this strap and we'll be good to go pretty easy install Okay, both shocks are done. The second shock took about 20 to 25 minutes. So much quicker without having to worry about the cameras and setting up and not blocking your guys' view and all that kind of stuff. So pretty quick install. You could do all four in approximately two hours. Now that's gonna depend on how bad the back is to get to the bolts. I'm assuming it's a little bit easier. I didn't look at it, but you don't have the steering mechanisms and stuff in the way. I'm sure they've got something else in the way engineers seem to find a way to be able to do that something that's make really a, an easy install and easy fix can be made really a pain in the butt if you don't have access to the bolt i am going to increase the difficulty of this from a 6 out of 10 to an 8 out of 10 solely based on the fact that the nuts and bolts are really difficult to get undone and tightened up again you're going to have to have a big ratchet and you just don't have a whole lot of space to get in there and put a lot of torque on on the ratchet so it makes it really really difficult the bolts are fairly long so you've got a long way to turn them off that's the longest part of the process is just undoing the nut and bolt with that being said this is something that is definitely easy for a DIYer to do this covers the Ford F53 chassis but I'm assuming that it's very very close for the workhorse chassis or even the diesels the Freightliner chassis and stuff as well just uh, a little bit of a of a heads up on the other side I'm assuming it's the way the the RV was jacked up I actually had to jack the frame up instead of the spring up to get the bolt holes to align themselves so I actually just put the bottle jack underneath the frame push push the frame up and the spring and the bolt hole fell down in alignment with the the shock very very easy to do so wasn't difficult just a little bit different on the other side first side i jacked up the spring on the second side jacked up the frame not a big deal so if you're a diy you like to do yourself stuff 
yourself and you like to save yourself a few bucks, you can definitely do that when it comes to shock absorbers. I have no idea what a place would charge for that. If you guys have had that done, please leave that in the comments. I'd be curious to, to see what they charge you for that. The shocks themselves were around $120, $150, something like that. And then the install was free, just a little bit of our time. So as I said earlier, or I may not have said earlier, I don't really know if I mentioned this earlier, but I'm going to dub these videos the DIY experiment, stuff that you can do yourself on your motorhome, RV, and or vehicles and save yourself a little bit of cash, spend a little bit of time, sweat a little bit, get your clothes a little dirty, but all in all, save yourself a little money. So thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time.